Dexmedetomidine, or DEX, is frequently used in the ICU for light to moderate sedation. It can also be used for procedural sedation and as an anesthetic adjunct in the operating room. Dexmedetomidine is notable for its ability to provide sedation with minimal risk of respiratory depression. However, when used alone to provide sedation, patients are typically arousable by verbal or tactile stimuli. As we discuss the mechanisms of how DEX works, the reason for this may become more clear. To understand the anesthetic effects of DEX, we need to talk about the locus ceruleus. The locus ceruleus provides key excitatory inputs to the cortex, basal forebrain, and intralaminar nucleus of the thalamus. It also provides inhibitory inputs to the preoptic area of the hypothalamus. The preoptic area, in turn, has inhibitory projections to the major arousal centers in the midbrain, pons, and hypothalamus. The effects of DEX on arousal are primarily due to its action on the presynaptic alpha-2 adrenergic receptors of neurons projecting from the locus ceruleus. When DEX binds to the alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, it hyperpolarizes the locus ceruleus neurons, which decreases norepinephrine release. This leads to a loss of inhibitory inputs to the preoptic area, which allows the inhibitory projections from the preoptic area to the arousal centers to become highly active in their suppression of activity in the arousal centers. This leads to sedation. Interestingly, this mechanism is also postulated to be an essential part of how non-REM sleep is initiated. The decrease of norepinephrine release also decreases thalamocortical connectivity due to the loss of excitatory inputs from the locus ceruleus to the cortex, basal forebrain, and intralaminar nucleus of the thalamus. The relationship between the mechanisms of DEX sedation and non-REM sleep make a lot of sense considering the similarities in their EEG patterns. At low doses, the typical EEG pattern for DEX is a combination of slow delta oscillations and spindles, which are 9 to 15 hertz oscillations that occur in bursts lasting 1 to 2 seconds. These spindles closely resemble a feature of stage 2 non-REM sleep. In this state of sedation, patients are likely to respond to minimal auditory and tactile stimulation. As the dose increases, the spindles become smaller and the amplitude of the slow delta oscillations increase. The EEG pattern at this state resembles slow wave sleep. While at this state of DEX sedation, patients are typically unresponsive to verbal queries, but they may move in response to changes in the level of nociceptive stimulation. Like ketamine, dexmedetomidine is an anesthetic that, when being delivered at clinically accepted doses, can result in misleading EEG index values from processed depth of anesthesia monitors. However, ketamine and DEX are at opposite extremes. Ketamine's very active EEG pattern can produce higher index values causing concerns about whether the patient is actually unconscious. DEX's prominent slow delta EEG activity can result in low index values. While the index may appear to indicate an adequate state of unconsciousness, in reality, the patient is only in a state of sedation from which they can be easily aroused rather than truly unconscious at a surgical level. Please visit the associated course to earn CME and learn more about the use of the EEG for anesthesia practices.